Should I learn the Rebbe's letters, Igris? What should be my goals in learning them? So I'm going to be naive and make believe that I don't have a context for this question, although I suspect that there is a context to this question. The answer to this question is, shall I learn the Rebbe's letters? Why not? It's Taira. Moreover, the Rebbe is Nasi the Rebbe is Ar Rebbe Ar Nasi. And therefore, his Torah, whether it's the Siches or the Maimorim or the Igris, is as the Rebbe would call it, Karev Karev Lano, the closest thing to us, and therefore the most important. The most important even on the level of Torah, because one of the means for his Gashas to a Rebbe Anasi is through Torah, and we all know that the uh, that the connection to a tzaddik, a rebbe nasi is uh, a means of connecting to. It is the means of connecting to a kadosh baruch hu bebechin as panim, and there's no shalos of mamutza like it's explained in the siches. So learning the rebbe's Torah like it says in the Hayyim Yoyim is an in his kashas. In addition, the gamze iker. The Rebbe's Torah is for our generation. It's not just that the Rebbe teaches, but what the Rebbe teaches and how the Rebbe teaches. And what the Rebbe directs and inspires is our business, because it's our generation and our Rebbe. And therefore the Igris Kedish is just as important as the Memorim and the Sichas. So that's the answer to this question without any context. But the, the context, I'm assuming, without this person telling me so, is the fact that it's become accepted by many members of Anash to see Igris Kodesh as more than just the Rebbe's Torah and Hadracha, but even Kloli in general, but to see it as the means of communication between the Rebbe and Hasidim after Gimel Tamas. So I've heard that even before Gimel Tamas, uh, there were Hasidim who had this attitude that every day you have to learn one letter from the Rebbe, um, I guess I should go back a little earlier. The the story of the Rebbe's Igres, of printing of the Rebbe's letters, historically, is a simple one. Now, of course, nothing is simple, but it appears simple. That the Rebbe, after Lama Ches, after the 1977-78, began to print the Torah of all the Rebbeim. And one of the things which he did was print the letters of the Rebbeim, beginning with the Alter Rebbe, and that task he gave to his librarian, to Harav Bet Eleven Zogazunzayin, as opposed to the Maimorim, which were given to a different uh, group of people. And when he finished the Yalta Rebbe, he did the Middle Rebbe. And uh, when he finished the Middle Rebbe, he did the Tzemach Tzedek. When he finished the Tzemach Tzedek, he did the Rebbe Marash. I think originally it came out in one volume. The Alter Rebbe, the Middle Rebbe, Tzemach Tzedek, I think originally came out in one volume. Now there's a separate volume for each. The Rebbe Marash was originally literally a pamphlet, and now it's a book. Then he printed two volumes of my modern, the letters of the Rebbe Rashab. Subsequently, later on, they found many more letters. Now there were six volumes of Igris Kedish of the Rebbe Rashab. And then, in you know, normal sequence, he began to the, the, the letters of the Rebbe, the previous Rebbe. So it, there was a certain pattern to it. The Rebbe gave this task to Rabbi Levin, of Zan Gezunt. He did the Alter Rebbe, the Mitra Rebbe, Tzamech Tzedek, then he did the Rebbe Marash, then he did the Rebbe Rashab, then he did the Fiedrich Rebbe. Originally, he published, I think, 12 volumes of the previous Rebbe's letters. Since then, they printed quite a few more, four or five, or maybe six or seven. Um, but they were published as later, more letters came into the library, but originally they published 10 or 12 volumes. As soon as he finished the previous Rebbe, he began to work on the Rebbe. That's the Hishtalshalus and Da'as Tachta. That's the way it played out. Uh, in in the in, in the order of things on a natural level, that as soon as they were finished with the letters from the previous Rebbe, the Rebbe brought from his home an enormous volume of letters that he had written before he became Rebbe, which were not in his archive, and he he again instructed Rabbi Levin to publish them. I understood at the time that Lakut Asichas felt that they had a din kedima to the letters because they had printed them and they suffered from Lakut Asichas. And um, again, this is what I understand that in Lukut Asichis, the letters were printed topically, and in the Igres Kodesh, they're printed chronologically, in the order of years. And of course, over the years, they printed whatever it is, about 30 volumes of the Rebbe's Igres Kodesh. 
um, I must point out that they haven't even begun to print the Rebbe's letters in English that people say are even more voluminous and arguably more instructive, more educational than the Hebrew ones, but that remains to be seen in Mitzvah Shem. Um, Rabbi Simpson, all of a shalom, Rabbi Shalom Mendel Simpson, who was the Rebbe's archivist, who had to be the first censor of these letters. Before the letters were given to Rabbi Levin, Rabbi Simpson had to decide, based on the Rebbe's instructions, what letters could be printed that would not be hurtful to individuals. Because the Rebbe was very, very concerned about people's privacy and honor and so on. And uh, the way I understand it is that after Rabbi Simpson would censor the letters, the letters went into the Rebbe who would further censor the letters, and then the letters first went to Rabbi Levin. Rabbi Levin wrote a book a little while after Gimel Tammuz called Esrim Shnei Savoida. Twenty years of work with the Rebbe, and in it he includes correspondence between himself and the Rebbe about the need to have access to the full archive in order to be able to understand the historical context of the letters, to be able to produce a more comprehensive forward, and the Rebbe basically said that the information is private and he can't disclose it. Um... So Rabbi Simpson spoke in 770 a number of times, around 85, 86, Memheim and Vov, when the Rebbe's letters began to be published, and he made it very clear that the Rebbe was desperate to get them out as quickly as possible. In other words, the Rebbe had a very vested interest in the imminent and the hasty production of his letters. They were printing at 1.4 or 5 volumes a year, with an index, with a mafteh, which is all very work-intense, labor-intensive. And the understanding was that the Rebbe wanted these letters out, not just because of their value as Torah, but more importantly as their value as Heiro and Hadroch. In the Rebbe's letters, you have the Rebbe's opinion about so many questions. And the Rebbe was rushing to produce his letters as quickly as possible, so people would have access to this information as early as possible. And of course, nobody anticipated the Chavzai and the Gimel Tamas. Um, when these things happened the letters that had been printed prior, and then, of course, the letters which would be printed post at a much, much slower pace, uh, became extraordinarily important because in the Rebbe's letters you have for thousands of very important practical questions, both Torah and Mitzvah's questions as well as human behavior questions in all areas and facets of life. Now, the problem with the Rebbe's letters is, as uh, the famous secretary of the Rebbe, the Meshul Eibrachstein, who passed away before I could remember him, he was he was not the head of the Rebbe Secretariat, but he was the senior member of the Secretariat, and he was very well respected. Um, in some ways, I heard that in some ways he sort of set the tone of the Rebbe Maskidos, even though the head of the Maskidos was Rabbi Chadakov, who was younger than him, I believe. And the Meshul Eib used to say he would go into the Rebbe six days a week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, for dictation, every day. And the Rebbe had letters which he wanted to answer with letters of his own. The Meshul Leib went into the Rebbe, and the Rebbe would dictate, in short, those letters. He would write them up, he would type them up, he'd bring them into the Rebbe, the Rebbe would edit. If the editing was small, you would get that letter with the Rebbe's corrections. If the editing was substantial, the letter would be retyped, and then you would get the letter. Um, so the Meshul Leib used to say, the Meshul Leib had a sense of humor, he was a big chassid. He was a serious chassid, but he had a sense of humor. The Meshul Leib used to say, you know, you work for the Rebbe long enough, you think you know how to answer his questions. And you almost feel like some questions you know what the Rebbe is going to answer. And then all of a sudden he spoke in Yiddish, and bite the schnitt, the Rebbe changes the attitude completely. You cannot learn 100% from a mind of Igor's Kodesh to a question that you have if it's the same question. Because although there are patterns, and although the letters of the Rebbe are instructional, they do... Um, teach us how to think, really. And after we learn how to think from the Igor's Kedish, we can learn how to live based on the instructions that Igor's Kedish provide, but they are personal letters. And there is no doubt that you look in the Rebbe's Igor's, two different people who ask the same question and get very different answers because they're different people. So it's not as black and white as if it says in the Igor's Kedish, it applies to me. This is where the Asay L'Charav comes in, you know, personal advice and to, to see if it applies to you. Although, uh, there's no question that the value of the Rebbe Zegris, and again, according to what Rabbi Simpson used to say at those talks in 770, 30 years ago, 
the reason that Rebbe was so intent and so determined to get the letters out as quickly as possible is because the Rebbe saw the letters not just as information and as Torah and as history, but as instruction. Nevertheless, it's not as simple as opening up, you know, finding where your question is asked in Igis Kedish and follow the answer, although probably 70% of the time that would be the right thing to do. There are, there are many, many answers that are person-specific. And the proof, of course, is that many people will ask the same question and get various different answers, in some cases diametrically opposite answers, and they're both printed um, in the Igris Kedish. So I'm saying two things. I'm saying, A, there's no question. Again, Rabbi Simpson, Shalom Mendel Simpson, all of our Shalom, who prepared the letters for print, indicated, maybe he even said explicitly, that the Rebbe was in a big rush to get the Igris out as quickly as possible, as he would say, Igrois Kodesh, and that part of the reason was because the Hayra, the, the insight in the Igris Kedish, was very important for people to have going forward. Um, now, it's become traditional for two things. Number one, that people have a tradition, especially the Chesidish Abacharim, that every day they read an Igris of the Rebbe before they go to sleep or whatever it is. I think it's an incredibly good meaning. It's a great idea. It's idea for his kasha, it's his idea for Haidon Hadracha. Um, I don't necessarily think that whatever you read in that Igris is an instruction for you for that day, although sometimes it may be. But certainly, the Igris Kaidish are a very real part of our Hiskashtos, and more importantly, or also importantly, a very important part of our getting instruction from the Rebbe about how he wants us to think and how he wants us to live our lives uh, practically. So that's number one. Should I learn the Rebbe's Igris? Of course you should learn the Rebbe's Igris. Uh, must you learn the Rebbe's Igris? Is learning the Rebbe's Igris the same thing as learning Chitas and the Rambam? I don't think it is. It's a choice. It's a hergish, but it's a very good one. And of course, the second issue is that people... Um, have chosen Igis Kedish as their means to, to you know, to use the words of the Rebbe. Do freg when the Rebbe vet gefinyan aveg vitz enfin, and you ask, and the Rebbe will find a way to answer. Since Gimel Tamas, it's become a custom by many Hasidim that when you have questions, they put letters in Igis Kedish. They write a letter to the Rebbe, and they put it in the Igis Kedish, and they frequently get answers. Again, I don't think this is a halacha lamayisha mesin. I don't think you have to do this. The Rebbe said, you ask, and the Rebbe will find a way to answer. He didn't say that the, the medium is through Igis Kedish. It could be through a hundred other ways, including what the Rebbe said himself, which is, Katas did the Mevinim, Katas Refi Yedid, Katas Rab Meir Heira, Katas Chassidish Heira, Vamashpia, or Tishu Oberoi Vyoyetz, the ideas that the Rebbe spoke about. Yud Gimel Tishrei Tovshin Memches, and then again to Bishra Tovshin Memches, and then what Tzoyish Abes Kedish Truma Tovshin Memches, and then again Chafalah Vada Tovshin Memches, about the idea that when you follow the Rebbe's instructions and ask a Mashpia or a Rav or a doctor or a professional in whatever field who's a friend, an Eitzah, based on the Rebbe's instruction, when that person gives you the answer, or those three people give you the answer, this is an answer that's coming from the Rebbe. But it's still become a custom by many Hasidim to put letters in Nigris Kedish. Fact of the matter is, it works. <laughs> it works. You see, amongst many people, are not Lubavitchers, very far from Lubavitchers, who uh, who use the Nigris Kedish simply because it works. I, I think it's very important for people to appreciate that Nigris Kedish, like a friend of mine, it's not like a friend of mine told me cynically, it's not like a, an ATM machine where you just pull out. If you write a letter to the Rebbe, you have to take it very seriously. That's a certain amount of preparation. There also has to be an understanding that if you're not going to like the answer, you're going to do what the answer is anyway, or don't ask, don't open the igris. It's very, to me, that's very, very serious. I just want to say in closing that there's a shtikler emis for this minig. The fact that it's become the custom by many anash, when they have letters, when they have questions, when they need eights and hadrach and bracha, they write a letter to the Rebbe. I want to make it very clear. You don't write letters to igris kaidish. Write letters to the Rebbe. And then they open up the Igris Kedish, and often the answer will be there. And in some cases, in a very blatant and bold and almost miraculous way, or actually miraculous way, has a shtikle remes. And the remes is called when the Fir Hebe passed away. And the Rebbe spoke about this question of how you get answers from the Fir Hebe after Yud Shvat. And of course, at that time, the Rebbe was not in any way uh, allowing himself to indicate that he was the Rebbe, the Nasi. So he would say that famous expression, you ask and the Rebbe will find a way to answer. And he brought a life from a story in Tanakh. 
It says in Tanakh, the Yov de Michtav Melio, the Yov Navi went with Sa'ara. Hashemayim Melio Navi rose up into the heavens in a tumult, in a, in a storm, with a fired chariot. And after he passed on, a letter came from the Yov Navi. And the, the Rebbe said that this letter came through Elisha, but it's called Michtav Me Eliyahu. And of course, the concept is that Eliyahu's physical goof had left the earth, and nevertheless, he found the way of communicating with Chesidim, with Tamimim, with Anash, with Yidin. So the fact that Igre is Kaidish and Igre is Kaidish could just as well have been Michtav Kaidish is the means that was chosen by Chesidim. This goes into Afal Pisha Einim Nevi'im, Bnei Nevi'im Heim, the Zachush, Chesidim have a Chesidish Achush, and without perhaps associating the correlation, the fact that the example that the Rebbe gave for this idea of getting answers from the Rebbe to the Igres Kedesh um, is consistent with the example that the Rebbe himself gave when he talked about this 70, 70 years ago, 71 years ago. B'chalif, and the underlying issue is his kashras, connected to the chassid and the Rebbe, and of course the underlying issue of his kashras is Avedis Hashem, Tereb Avoida, we should be better Jews and better servants and be makar of ourselves than somebody else. And we should all be mispalal and be mafzir and be zeichet to the gula shleim and take it from a yad. We're holding mamish now before Pesach, Tovshin Pei Aleph. So mazeichet zayin that neichal shom. This year it's min min hapsochem and min azvochem. Right? It's not min azvochem and hapsochem. It's min hapsochem and min azvochem because that is Pesach is Shabbos. So you can't have a carbon shlomim. You can't have a chagiga with the carbon Pesach. So the chagah Pesach kosher v'sameach. We'll have the gula shleima.